For the past few days, all of the action has been from witnesses inside the impeachment inquiry. But today, Republican lawmakers staged a protest against the closed-door proceedings. They stormed the secure facility where hearings are taking place, calling for the evidence to be heard in public. This comes a day after the top U.S. diplomat in Ukraine, Bill Taylor, testified he was told President Trump blocked aid to Ukraine to pressure the government into investigating his rivals. Democratic Congresswoman Madeleine Dean sits on the Judiciary Committee, which will eventually draw up the impeachment articles, and she joined me a short time ago. Thank you so much for being with us. So Republicans are saying your approach to the impeachment inquiry is secretive. They protested dramatically today. Is it time to move to open hearings so you can build a case for the American public to follow? Not yet. No, I really trust uh, the strategy that we are pursuing. Uh, these are not um, closed hearings for any other reason than to protect uh, the witnesses who are coming forward so courageously and also to protect the innocent. There's, there's value in pr pursuing uh, closed door testimony because sometimes things will come up that might implicate someone who has no reason to be implicated. So it's important to protect the testimony of witnesses uh, and also protect the innocent. In the meantime, you see that we have had courageous people coming forward yesterday, uh, Mr. Taylor coming forward. Uh, a decades-long public servant. Uh, there's no reason to worry about the process. The process is correct, and then we will bring it to the American people. How pivotal do you think Ambassador Taylor's testimony was? I think it was critically important for a couple of reasons. First, his impeccable service and integrity record. Second, his contemporaneous notes. Third, his co grave concern for what he was witnessing with this shadow diplomacy. Uh, being handled by Rudy Giuliani in some coordination with the State Department, which is very strange. And, of course, what he's, he's so very clearly said, which is it would be crazy uh, for the president to engage in holding up foreign aid to a democracy uh, under assault by Russia, uh, aid that we, Congress, uh, authorized for his own personal and political gain. That would be crazy. It would also be criminal. And yet, even red state Democrats are saying, please don't let the impeachment inquiry drag on into 2020 because it will muddy the presidential election. W would you agree? I do agree, and I'm not a red state. Uh, my constituents say the same thing. Please do this well, do it fairly, do it expeditiously. Uh, this has been a nightmare for our country. Uh, the corruption, the chaos, um, the profiteering by this president. Uh, the, the shakedown of a foreign leader for personal and political gain, and as Nancy Pelosi so gravely has said, all roads leading to Putin and Putin's advantage. Uh, I take this very seriously, very soberly. Uh, like Nancy Pelosi, I pray about this. I pray that we can do this ex expeditiously and well and get clarity before the American people and then get peace before the American people. Well, turning to another topic, that of Facebook, you heard from Mark Zuckerberg today in front of your Financial Services Committee. Is he doing enough to police political ads ahead of that 2020 election? I was uh, very disappointed at the testimony of Mark Zuckerberg today. There were so many questions that he, as the leader of that powerful platform, could not answer. Whether it was basic questions of the diversity uh, of his colleagues, uh, whether it was basic questions about settlements that he's entered into. I had the chance to ask him about the last 10 years of deceptive practices that they had never gotten control over. They entered into a consent decree in 2012 with the FTC because they admitted to uh, breaches of our privacy, their users' privacy and other deceptive practices. Just this year, in July, they entered into a settlement for $5 billion, with a B, dollars because they failed over the course of 10 years to correct uh, those breaches of trust. Uh, I, I think it's a, a grievous uh, problem that Facebook uh, faces, uh, but it's also incredibly serious for its users. But is Facebook effectively a monopoly, and is it time for Congress to act to try and break that up? I think we have to take a look at that. I don't know the answer to your question, to be very honest. Uh, but I, I worry about anyone so big and so profitable that ignores uh, the regulations that they are under and doesn't li literally take a leadership role to say, what can we do to make sure that there isn't interference with our elections by use of our platform? That was the vacancy in the answers that I heard today by the leader of that company. I would have thought, and he's talking about researching different things, and they're looking into this, and they're going to apply that. Uh, I would have thought that they would have had these answers very, very readily. I asked him another set of questions that's something we are worried about, which is uh, whether it's enterprises or foreign governments, 
uh, booking rooms at Trump International. So I asked him, any chance uh, that Facebook has booked blocks of rooms, whether using them or not using them at Trump International? He was uh, surprised by my question and did not know. Congresswoman Madeleine Dean, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.